Good morning. Um, I'm Wayne, and this is actually Tammy. And our daughter Haven is in the children's area, and she is just as much a part of this ministry as we are. And God is really using her in Mombasa. And so um, we have four daughters, and we have two grandchildren. We have one grandchild that is actually three and a half weeks old. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? So. Um, what started off for us as a mission trip about 10 years ago um, has become an amazing story, a story of redemption and a story of sanctification for both the people in Kenya and for us. And uh, in the beginning, when we first decided as a family to go to uh, Africa, we had no idea what that was going to look like. Um, we just felt God calling us to Africa. And so we began selling all of our earthly possessions and uh, downsizing my business and just preparing to go to Africa. And uh, along the way, we were just talking to people. We we're like, ah, oh, we don't know where we're going, but we're going to Africa. And uh, one day, my wife was at a basketball game for our daughter, and she met somebody there at the basketball game that told her about another missionary that was in Kenya. And so to make a long story short, crossing paths that day, we met the people that we would go and start in Kenya with about nine years ago. And so anyway, um, Matthew, Matthew 6, 19 through 21 says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, 
there is your heart also. Um, as I was thinking of this, I was just thinking, <clears throat> you know, God wants something so much better for us. He wants to trade in all of our stuff, but he gives us something far more beautiful. Um, we can't see it, um, but it's, it's beautiful. Um, it's better than um, a, a bigger house. It's better than a, a brand new car. And it's better than even brand new shoes, ladies. Um, uh -oh. um, let's see. So, you know, we, you know, when we stepped off on the mission field, um, it was, it was literally God, you know, God's divine appointments that he made for us. And um, it wasn't easy, though. The process was not easy. Um, we, uh, we had to do a lot of hard things um, to get there. But um, Isaiah 48, 17 says he leads us in the way we should go. And um, I definitely, looking back, I can see what can only be described as just his hand um, placing us exactly where we were supposed to be at exactly the right time. Um, Proverbs 16, 9 says, The mind of man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. And then Matthew 6, 24, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in wealth. Um, so um, there in Mombasa, we both have um, ministries that we do together as a family. But then we, at, we also each have our own individual ministries, Wayne, I, and Haven. Um, so for me, I'm going to talk a little bit about my ministries first. Um, so that would be um, one of my loves is the Baby Village Ministry. And um, so the average income of um, a person in Mombasa is like three to five dollars a day. Um, and so I just take some care packages and go into the village usually once a month, um, just take a baby bath and some rice and beans and lotion and diapers and onesies. And thank you for those that um, donated those onesies. The, um, the ladies were very, very appreciative. Um, so just so you know that, so we're in, a Mus in an area that is extremely Muslim. And so um, these Muslim ladies actually allow me to come into their little mud huts and pray over their babies and pray over their homes. And um, it's just a sweet time um, that I get to do. Um, one of the chiefs in the area, um, the last time I was there, he said, you are building a bridge between the Christians and the Muslims. And so anyway, that's a, a sweet ministry. Um, then we have our medical ministry um, that is always evolving right now. It is a medical um, first aid in the villages, um, but it it goes into other areas as well because there's so many needs. Um, but this is Brenda here. She has spina, no, not spina, um, hydrocephalus. And so she's three years old and she couldn't walk or talk, but um, she definitely is all there. She's just precious. But anyway, we were able to get her, um, what are those things called? Neck a neck brace, at, which made a huge, huge difference. So for the first time ever, she's been able to actually sit up. And, um, you know, you can imagine it's life-changing for her. Um, we're working on getting her a back brace um, before we get back. So um, that's Brenda. This is Margaret. Um, we met her at the 500 Club where we do, you know, small first aid. So um, in the villages, they don't have soap or baths or shoes or those kind of things so there's a lot of just real small little wounds that need um that need first aid um but margaret was one that we met that um she had was wearing a big bandage on the side of her head 
And come to find out, she had um, she had an ear infection when she was about two years old, and it didn't get taken care of, so it went, you know, to her bone. And um, she started she did go to the doctor a couple times, um, but they put her on medication and it didn't go away. So the doctors were telling her it was a tumor, it was cancerous. It, she, you know, she wasn't able to be helped, but with just a small amount of money, we were able to send her to a specialist, and I wish I could show you the before pictures and the after pictures, um, because what a difference. I mean, look at that. Gosh, you know, um, and somebody here donated to that, and so thank you so much um, to that person. Um, that's a picture of what happens to us spiritually as well, you know, where before we're like this, and then when we find the hope of Jesus, we're like this, you know. Um, so this is, I don't have time for Lorraine's story today. Um, if I was to tell you all the stories of God's goodness in Kenya, we would be here literally the entire day, and we're not in a Kenyan um, service, so I'll keep it short. Um, but that's Lorraine there. Um, we met her at the government hospital, and that's her before picture. And um, hers wasn't small medical needs. Hers was very, very significant. But um, that's her picture at the end. Isn't she beautiful? Um, and we've now um, got her in a excellent school, and she's doing amazing. So that's Lorraine. There's the government hospital. Um, they go on strike quite a bit. Um, lots of people die. It's really um, be thankful for our for our medical care we have here in the United States. Um, next, okay, Irene. So some of you know Irene's story. Um, she um, another story of redemption. She was raped and um, tied to a railroad track by a bunch of men, tied her to a railroad track, and the train ran her over, and um, her legs were, you know, cut off, and um, they actually took her to the same hospital where Lorraine was, the government hospital, and once again, it was on strike, and so um, they took her to another hospital, which is the hospital where Lorraine got help as well, and um, that is a miracle in itself. Um, if you know Kenya, you absolutely 100% are not going to get into a hospital unless you have money ahead of time, up front. Um, and here, this lady was homeless. Um, she, we actually worked with her um, at the dump where I think over 500 people live. And so um, she had not a penny. And, um, but this is her now, and um, God's doing amazing things. Um, on our website, which is Go Sin Join Us, um, there's a video of her testimony on there. We, we weren't able to put it on here, but um, it's a beautiful testimony. And just to give you a small little clip, um, before we left, she was in my back seat, and we're driving, and um, she's telling us about how she wants to do certain things, and her mom says, well, you don't even have legs. And she said, I may not have legs here on earth, but when I get to heaven, Jesus is holding a pair for me. And so um, she's just a fighter, and I believe one day she's going to encourage many women. And um, then we have Haven's Ministry. Um, she um, loves going to the orphanage. Um, they're quite short-handed, so we just go and love on these little babies and change diapers and feed babies. And anyway, um, Haven adores some of the babies there. Gold, that's gold there. Actually, her name is something else, but in Swahili, I can't say it, so her name's Gold. Um, and um, before we left, she just was crying because she said she was afraid she was going to get adopted before we got back. Um, and so I explained to her how we really do want that and we need to pray for that. But, um, and then I just want to share my favorite scripture for you. Um, it says Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. 
Is this not the fast which I choose? To loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house? When you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light will break out like the dawn and your recovery will speedily spring forth and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of wickedness, and if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will become like midday and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones and you will be like a watered garden and a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Um, and, you know, I know that we don't have the hungry here like like we do. It's, you don't walk out your compound and there's hungry people everywhere. Um, but spiritually, we do have hungry people. Um, we have people that are hungry for the Lord. They're spiritually hungry. And so, um, you know, we need to give them, we need to be filled with God's word, our daily bread, so that we can give them a piece of fresh bread, not a piece of stale bread, and um, so, yes. Okay, it's my turn now. She says that's her favorite scripture to every one of them. Pretty awesome, I think. Um, so, I'll try and do two things at once. Uh, the thing that I like to do so much is discipleship. His favorite thing. Favorite. I'll arm wrestle you for it. <laughs> no, we can do it together. Um, so, at our house, every Sunday night, uh, we do discipleship. And uh, we, we, we have some boys that we've worked with for a long time. They actually call me Buddha, which means father. And uh, we have the boys come over, and sometimes girls come too. And we'll do discipleship every Sunday night at our house. And we'll get together and we'll pray. And like one of my boys said, he said, we'll do swallow ship. Y'all a little slow, right? Swallow ship. You know, fellowship, we're going to eat. Swallow ship. And so anyway, we'll do, we'll eat, okay? And then we will uh, do a Bible study together. And then we'll pray together. And we'll actually play the guitar and uh, just praise Jesus together. And so Christopher, he's the second one up there in the second frame. Um, he and I have been walking real close together in a discipleship. We've been doing experience in God together. And uh, he um, was on his way to work one day, and uh, he had his book with him that we were working on. And he was, he was going to a day job, and so some days they allow you to go to work or they call you, and then some days they don't. Well, that day they did not call him. And so he went to the local park with his book and started doing his Bible study. And then God just spoke to him while he was in the park. And so he went around to everybody that was in the park, and he was telling them about Jesus. And one person accepted the Lord that day. And you got to understand, every, half of everybody you meet is Muslim. And so if you say the word Jesus, you know, you might get hit or something. I mean, that's, that's a nice thing. But uh, anyway, and he was speaking to Muslims there, and they were, they were accepting what he was saying. And so he's discipling. You know, we're discipling. He's discipling. We all need to disciple. Discipleship, we, we don't have a, a, it's not an option here. It's our job to disciple. And so I was supposed to say that somewhere else. Um, so Matthew 28, 19, we all know it. Go, uh, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then 2 Timothy 2, 2 through 3, it says, The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men. Are we going to be faithful men? Do we have faithful men here in this church? Am I going to be a faithful man who is able to teach others? 
and suffer hardship with me as a good soldier for Christ. This is all of our jobs as a born-again believer. If you've been wondering about your spiritual gift, we're supposed to disciple. That's our gift. And so it was one of the, the last things that uh, Jesus spoke when he was here on earth. And so um, evangelism. Um, in Kenya, there's a small village that's right outside of our, we have a church home in Kenya. Thank God we finally found a church home. And we're actually praying about starting a Calvary North Coast in Kenya. So be praying for us on that. But uh, right outside the doors of the church that we go to right now is a village with thousands and thousands of people. And uh, we go into that village and we evangelize once a month. And then not only do we go into the village and evangelize, we bring them into the church for discipleship afterwards. If you're going to lead somebody to the Lord, lead them all the way. And so uh, leading them to lead it, he's, he's going to draw all men to himself, but if we're going to uh, talk to somebody about Jesus and they make a decision for him, then it's our job to disciple them or at least help them get grounded somewhere where they can get discipled. And so um, in this, uh, I was supposed to flip here. Okay, so witchcraft. Uh, in Kenya, for some reason, witchcraft is really big. And I wish this video would work, but um, the video, um, which, which, yeah, oh, it is going to work? But the video itself shows uh, we were actually in the village changing Lorraine's bandages. Um, and these, and I know they did it on purpose, because we were there and we had people praying and we were changing bandages, and then all of a sudden... <laughs> Sorry about the video, but you can kind of get the, the idea of what's going on there. And uh, they just were coming around us while we were changing the bandages and praying for this little girl. I mean, we were in the village with this little girl that had open wounds all over her underneath the little canopy, changing her bandages and praying. And the, the witchcraft, all those people came around us while we were doing that. And so um, anyway. So, um, Mark 8, 35 through 38 says, um, we need to take up our cross every day and deny, for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in the adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And then he, oh, that's the slums. I wanted to show you a picture. This is where a lot of our uh, boys that we work with come from, and a lot of people live in places like this. This was actually Lorraine's home when we met her. And I'll get to that in a second. And so uh, Luke 10, um, let me see, let me go back to that. Luke 10, 10 uh, 2 says, and he was saying to them, the harvest is plentiful. Uh, I hope I didn't break that. Um, but the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. In Ken Kenya, man, the harvest is plentiful, and they want to hear about it. You know, not like us in America, and I'm not dogging America, I'm, I'm an American. But us in America, we run from people. And in, in Kenya, they're open, they're ready. Let's sit down, let's have some tea, and let's talk about whatever it is you have to say. And so the harvest is wide open, but the laborers are few. And so I was reading in my Bible uh, time this morning, um, Oswald Chamber, Chambers, uh, his utmost for his highest, and thank Bo for sending me that. Um, you sent it to me a long time ago. But anyway, um, he was like, what? <laughs> you didn't know, did you? Um, Even the natural heart of the unsaved 
will serve if called upon to do so. Even the heart of the unsaved will serve if called upon to do so. But it takes a heart broken by conviction of sin, baptized by the Holy Spirit, and crushed into submission to God's purpose to make a person's life a holy example of God's message. Wow. We could all go home on that, I think. Um, one other thing I get to do while I'm in Kenya is basketball ministry. And uh, we come together, uh, all the missionaries in Kenya that know how to play basketball, and some that don't, but that's not me, by the way. Um, anyway, we get together every Wednesday, and we play basketball, and we invite everybody to come. And so any given Wednesday, we could have 20, 30 people and most of these are all Kenyans, and half of them are Muslim. And so they were coming, coming, and we are like, you know, this is wonderful. We're having our physical needs met here by playing basketball, but we need to do something with the Lord. And so we started doing Bible study with them, and it's been beautiful. It's been amazing. Um, we're going through the book of John, and I think we're on our sixth month, and I think we might be almost done with chapter one. And so the thing about it was is that, you know, it, it came my turn where I had to say the word Jesus in this, in this meeting. You know, they were all leading up and asking, what do you think this means? You know, verse 1, verse 2, and then it went on and went on, and then it was my turn to teach, and there was no way around it. I had to say, we're talking about Jesus Christ here. And so if you're Muslim, you don't, you don't want to hear that, okay? And so, but it's been amazing. We've got uh, a couple of the guys, two or three of the guys that, that they step up and they pray now. And then even a couple of them have been leading Bible studies there. And so, anyway, I wanted to talk about, um, well, that's the slums I was telling you about earlier. This is the 500 Club, and Tammy will talk about that. But I'll talk about what, what led us to this. Um, feeding program. There are 500 orphans in like a 10 mile radius from right here. That's crazy, isn't it? Orphans. They're either half orphan, they've lost both parents, they live with grandparents, or even some of them might live with aunts and uncles, and then some of them might live with the people that they, the village they came from. And so every one of these kids are some way orphaned and so they come 10 miles away sometimes to get a bowl of beans and maize every Saturday and so they come in they bring their bowl you know some of them have their little sister or brother on their back walking for miles and miles and they get a bowl of beans and maize and so they were coming all those miles and they were getting physical food and Tammy and I were like we needed, there needs to be something here spiritually. And so we began the 500 Club. And then Tammy will talk to you about that. Okay, 500 Club <clears throat> is basically like a VBS, but for 500, led by just a couple of people. <laughs> and so you can imagine, it just, it gets really, really crazy sometimes, and you never know what to expect. Um, Yes, there's been times when I've been handing out candy and I've been, I was getting ready to be trampled and I just had to like throw it and run, <laughs> you know. Um, so, um, but anyway, um, 500 Club, I think if we had to pick one thing that we spend most of our time with, I would, I would say it's probably the 500 Club. Um, most of them are, probably at least half are Muslim, like we said, um, and they're not allowed into the building um, because of their Islamic faith. But um, so we're having Bible study, um, music, and games, and it's in an open air church. And But all of the Muslim children, they stand outside and they're listening and they're hearing God's word um, and they're even dancing. Um, I actually had a super cute video up there of these little Muslim boys um, dancing, but it, it won't play, so. Um, but anyway, 
Um, I'm going to read a scripture to you. Um, it's Isaiah 55, 11. And it says, It is the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. And so we're, we're planting seeds. Um, I just want to say also that, you know, this ministry of the 500 Club is a little bit different than um, a ministry here because, because of their Muslim faith. They could, actually, they could actually lose their life for giving their life to Christ, even a child. Um, so we have to, it just looks a little bit different, but we are planting seeds, and at the right time, we are confident that God will make many of them grow. It's awesome. The first time that we've seen the kids, you know, it's just like you can see the difference in their faces from the very first time that we've seen them to, to now. And they had 500 Club yesterday, and we have some people there that are running it while we're gone. And uh, just their faces, it's like they would come, came in and they, had, they have no hope. And then now you're seeing that returning to their faces. And they're just beautiful. I could sit there all day with these kids. I, I'm, I'm in agreement. I don't know how you don't like kids. But anyway, so um, another thing that we get to do is this, sponsorship. That's Lorraine up there at the top. And she, when we met her, she was in the go uh, government hospital for nine months in one position, did not move. And she was wearing diapers. And so, anyway, you can see all the ones with ties we have in one of the best schools in Mombasa. And we have a, uh, sponsorships here in America that are taking care of them. And then Elma, the, the lady that's next to Haven there in the middle, um, she is gifted in teaching. She actually has a degree in teaching. And so she is feeling led by the Lord to go into the villages and take up shop in somebody's home and teach the kids for free. And so in doing that, we, we've been praying about trying to help her and sponsor her. And so uh, be in prayer for that. And you see my two boys over there. That is Ronnie. You, you, can't you see the resemblance? Yeah? The hair, I think, on the one right there. Um, anyway, Ronnie, the one uh, on the left, um, he's actually my guitar teacher. He's pretty good. Yeah. He's not doing real well with me. But um, anyway, um, and Christopher is on the right. And those two, we're praying, and they're praying that they'll get to go to university someday. Yeah. Whether, th whether that's in Kenya, whether that's in Kenya or in America, that'd be awesome. Um, they really believe that they're going to uh, be able to go to university, and they're smart. They're really smart. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, you see the SAT books in their hands. I told them, you know all that, and by the time you know all that, hopefully we'll have a place for you to go to school. So the government hospital... I mean, not government hospital. The government schools are, you know, we put a lot into the school here. I mean, it, it's a lot. But the government schools are usually one teacher to about 100 students. And um, it's not a very good place to um, educate anyone. Um, they use um, a whip or a cane to control the kids. And um, right before we left, using our, our um, first aid, we had to do first aid on a little girl because they had, um, she had open wounds all over her arms um, because they had beat her because she hadn't covered her book. Um, I guess they didn't have money for paper to cover the book, and so um, she just got beat. And so, you know, they'll beat you for, for anything if you don't know an answer. Um, and so it's not a very good place to, to educate children. So we put the very best into, into these here. Oh, let me just say one more thing. Um, I just wanted to tell you about Gladys. Um, she's on the bottom. She's over there somewhere. Anyway, 
Um, when we told her mom that we were going to sponsor her, um, we brought them in front of us, both of them together. And when we told them, they both weeped for like five minutes, five minutes crying, crying, crying. They were saying, Asante Sana Yesu Cristo, which is thank you, Jesus. And um, so just the people there are extremely thankful. And then we told her what school she was going to, and then that was another five minutes crying. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. We do have a video if you'd like to see that. Um, so what's, what's the future for us in Kenya? Um, well, we're going to continue with all the ministries that uh, we're doing so far. But uh, we feel like the Lord is leading us to maybe start more 500 clubs. Uh, Tammy seems to believe it'll be a 100 club maybe. But if you know Kenyans and children, it's not just 100. It'll be 500 or maybe 1,000. Uh, at Christmas, we did a big Christmas party, and I know some of the people here at the church helped uh, support that. Um, we were planning. Uh, they told us to plan for 300. And so, you know, I'm an extremist. So I planned for 600. Well, 1,000 showed up, and it was awesome. I think that God multiplied it. He multiplied everything we had, and everybody got something. But they got the word, too, most importantly. And so they heard about Jesus. And so... Did I mess up the picture? Yes, you did. <laughs> it's okay. I forgive you in advance. So uh, Acts twenty thirty five says, In everything I showed you, that by, by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, it is more blessed to give than receive. Do y'all believe that? Amen. It's better. It is more blessed to give than to receive. We get to, we get to give. And it's amazing. Um, one other thing that um, is near and dear to my heart is, uh, all of it is actually, but um, is addictions and uh, recovery class. And uh, in Kenya, there is no program, no education, nothing that says, hey, don't drink that. Hey, don't sniff that. Hey, don't do that. They, there's no other options. And so in Kenya, you know, about 26 years ago or so, I... I uh, made a decision not to drink and do drugs. And so I've been sober for 26 years. So I understand what, what's, what they're going through and the stronghold that drugs and alcohol have on people. And uh, there, uh, one of the strongholds is, is uh, glue. They sniff glue. And then the reason that they sniff glue it's because, one, they're poor, and they can afford it. And it, just like in America, you might have drug dealers walking around with drugs. In Kenya, they have drug dealers walking around with glue. It's crazy. And uh, anyway, um, this, this boy right here, you can see him, right? He looks proud. He looks proud. That in his left hand right there is glue. And he's sniffing that. And uh, Permanent brain damage. the thing that upsets me, I think it all upsets me, but the thing that upsets me the most about that particular picture is, look at the other two kids. It's going to happen. If they, if they don't get some kind of education or some kind of help, those other two kids, look at him. He's looking at his brother like, hey, I'm, I'm going to grow up into this someday. And that's just sad to me. Um, in this other picture on the left, we could not get the video to work, but in that same area, we seen a lady that was pregnant, and she has glue in her hand, and she's sniffing glue. And uh, it's just, it's just so sad to us. And uh, I want to, would like to, start a class that can help these people. 
Um, I wanted to set it up in one of the worst places in Mombasa. I'm kind of like that. Um, I go to the worst places and the hardest places, but I was warned. <laughs> I was warned, don't bring that class over here. You're going to have a problem. And so um, I'm going to our church to do that. And so we're going to start that immediately when we get back to Kenya. And uh, Fab's going to help me with some stuff, and I really appreciate that, brother. And so when we get back, we're going to start that class. And it's going to be at the church. And remember, I told you earlier, right outside the doors, thousands and thousands of people in the village. And so we'll start there, and we'll disciple them and work through that with them. I'm going to share a scripture that God put on my heart. Um, oh, um, this is just um, a picture of the area where we met Irene and a lot of other people. It's just the dump. Um, the right picture is Christmas, feeding, and um, anyway. Um, I'm going to share this scripture with you. Um, Mark 2, 15 through 17. It says, And it happened when he was reclining at the table in his house, and many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many of them, and they were following him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why is he eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not those who are wealthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And um, I was listening to um, a, a sermon this past week, and this guy, he had given his life to Christ. He was a Muslim. He had given his life to Christ, um, and he lived here in America, and his mother was a Muslim, but she had lived here almost 40 years, and no, not one time had anyone ever invited her um, to their home. And I just thought, gosh, that's so sad, you know. I mean, I know that, I know that, that y you don't have Muslims everywhere, um, like like we see. Uh, that we want to be better about inviting them also into our homes. But you don't have Muslims everywhere. But you do have people that are spiritually hungry, that um, don't have Christ, that um, God is. Um, putting them in your path so that you can um, give him his love. You can speak the truth to them. And so I um, just want to challenge y'all. I know Kenyans are very good about um, community and relationships, and um, that's something we've learned, but we can always be better, right? And so um, in the class that I'll be working with. These are some of the scriptures uh, that we're going to be working through. Uh, Ephesians 5.18 says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but filled with the Spirit. And then John 8.34, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is slave to sin. That's everybody that commits sin. And you, you guys know this. You know, if, if, if we have a sin in our life, don't we become slave to that? Yeah. And so, um, 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Okay, sorry. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 says, The body is the Lord's, and all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by any of them, by anything. And James 1, 14 through 15 says, um, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. And so we need a game plan. You know, I tell all my boys and anybody I disciple that you need a game plan. You need to have a game plan for if any of these temptations and things come up. And we need to be prepared for those before it comes up, not in the midst of it. Because a lot of times in the midst of it, we're going to make the wrong decision. I've made the wrong decision in the middle of things before. And so have a game plan and be ready. 
Um, something else we've been asked to do while we're in Kenya is um, we've asked to help them start a safe house. It's already been built. It's ready to go. And they just need some help kind of getting the right people in place and um, just kind of getting it organized, which is he's the organizer. I'm the disorganized one. So I won't be, I'll just be loving on these girls. But it'll be a safe house for young girls and um, that are trafficked or, um, you know, some of them get married into sometimes, you know, these young girls have to marry very old men and they need a place to escape from that lots of you know abuse different things so we'll be helping them with that and um, Psalms 82 4 rescue the weak and needy deliver them out of the hand of the wicked there's many to be delivered um, Proverbs 31 8 and 9 Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all the unfortunate. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and defend the rights of the afflicted and needy. Um, Isaiah 61.1, the spirit of the Lord of God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, and freedom to prisoners. Ezekiel 34.16, I will seek the lost to bring back the scattered, bind up the broken, and strengthen the sick. So a lot of times I get asked, are we afraid to be in Kenya? And um, how do we fear um, being in Kenya? And so uh, is it dangerous? And I would have to say yes. It is dangerous, but we are more afraid of living life for ourselves. We want to live a life that is sold out to Jesus Christ. We want to be right in the middle of his will. If Jesus says go, we want to drop and go right now, whatever it is. And it's a struggle. We're human. We have struggles, and Tammy's going to talk about that in a minute. But the safest place you and I can be is right where God wants us to be. Each time we go, there's something that we have to overcome. Um, yes, there's lots of struggles, but there's lots of beauty in the midst of it. Um, 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13 Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of his glory you may rejoice with exultation. Um, and so, you know, in Kenya, there's some very dark things you know there is a awareness that before we leave the house we have to put on our armor you know y'all know Ephesians 6 10 through 18 put on the full armor um, we are very aware um, we hear the call to um, prayer the Muslim call to prayer five times a day um, you know you see witchcraft you see um, just to drive in Kenya you know you need to pray before you leave the house it's crazy um, so just there's lots of um, poverty. And so you know you need to put on that armor. Um, but, you know, y'all need to put on your armor too. The devil attacks us in different ways. And over there in Kenya, it's very obvious how he attacks. But here in America, he comes at you in a sly way just kind of sneaks in in different ways. And um, so you still have to put on your armor. Um, so like Wayne said, every time we get ready to leave, um, spiritual warfare, um, you, you know, you've heard about all the fruit and all the beautiful things that, that God did. And, you know, that's just like a, a tiny percent of what he did while we were there. Um, but there is a price. You know, when we first got there, everything that could possibly happen, happened. 
Um, my oldest daughter um, had had a seizure, fell, and busted all her front teeth out. Um, my other daughter was pregnant. Um, she had the worst case of nausea and kept going to the emergency room, and um, I wasn't there to help her, which was very hard. Um, we also have um, some rent houses. That's how we help support our work that we do there. Um, the lady that lived in one of them got very sick and couldn't pay rent, um, which usually affected us. The other house, the plumbing, the roof, the, everything that could possibly go wrong with a house all happened at one time. So, um, and then ministry changes. When we first got there, what we were doing had changed, and we weren't sure what we were supposed to be doing. And we weren't even sure, like, the worst thing was we weren't sure we were supposed to be there. And so we're like, okay, what do we do? Do we go back? What do we do? And so we're like, okay, let's do the, the thing that we know we are supposed to do just today. Like, forget about tomorrow, right? God's Word says that. Today has enough worries of its own. So... We just began to um, spend time in God's Word. We didn't leave the house. I think we stayed home from, for like three weeks to a month, and we just prayed, and we just read our Bible and worshiped. And, um, and then Wayne says, he likes to say that at the right time, God, what did you say, slingshot us? S slingshot us into the ministries that he wanted us to do, and... Since then, we've had the peace of the Lord. Um, he's taken care of all those other things. Uh, many of y'all were praying for us during that time. Um, thank you. And, um, okay, Luke 14. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and his wife and children and brother and sisters, Yes, even in his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, um, there are times when um, we're on the mission field, there's, there's a cost, you know. Um, there's times when I want to get on an airplane and go back and see my grandbabies and, and you know, um, see my friends and take care of my children, um, have lots of money. <laughs> um, there's times that I, I do want that. But um, the truth is, is that um, I really want more than anything to be in the center of what God has for us. And I know we're supposed to be there. And um, he's better. He's better than anything this world has to offer and my first calling is to him that's my first calling um and so all right I, I wanted to go back to the scripture that she read earlier and it was uh first peter i can't read that without my glasses uh first peter 4 12 through 13 it says beloved do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you when all these things were happening we're like we were surprised, you know, but don't be surprised. You know, it, it, it's easier for me to say that because we're not going through things right now. But, you know, when something happens, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Stay strong in the Lord and put on your full armor every day, too. And, uh, you know, do what you know you need to do, and that is spend time with Jesus. And uh, our relationship with him is more important than anything that we can ever do. And so, is this where we're at right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm going to put you all on the spot right now. Okay, right now, I want to ask you a question. Is God specifically calling you to do something? Think about it. Is he specifically calling you to do something? Is he calling you to go into your communities and talk to somebody about Christ at work? Um, work with kids in the Sunday school? Yeah, work with kids even in the Sunday school. And, uh, or uh, be, as, be crazy like 
people call us all the time and go on a mission trip or go to Peru. I think they're going, yeah? Am I wrong? Yeah, I think so. And, um, you know, what is God calling you to do? I'd like you all to, like, answer that in your, in your mind right now. Take a minute. I'm waiting. No, I'm not, but God is. And so um, I'd like to get you out of your comfort zone for just a second. And I would like you to, to turn to the person, not your spouse, Bo and Desiree. Turn to somebody that's around you guys and tell them what that is real quick. All right, go. Amen? It's good to just say that, yeah? So, I guess a question for me to you is, what is God calling you to do? We believe we already know what God's calling us to do. And we're going to do that until he says to do something else. But what's he calling you to do? And uh, once you know it, do it. You know, and you just told somebody in the congregation about it, so now you can, you can pray for one another. And you all can spur each other on in that area. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, circumstances, you know, in your life will never say it's a good time to do something. You can be talked out of something every day of the week, and maybe even ten times a day. And so, uh, in Kenya, there's so many, so many needs. And uh, it's overwhelming, the needs. And we actually have to decide through the Lord which need will we, will he, does he want us to meet today. And so, um, and we all know the greatest need for all of us, and that's Jesus Christ. And if you don't have Jesus Christ, wow, please don't leave today without him. Please. That is, that is, I I hope you don't see us today. I hope you don't see Wayne and Tammy's ministry. I hope you see Jesus Christ, and that's it. We want nothing else but everybody to be a believer in Jesus Christ. And so if you don't know him today, please don't walk out that door. Don't walk out the door. And if, and if God has put something on your heart, get ready. You know, I had a pastor a while ago, Keith Pelliquin. I know some, some know him, real good friend of mine. Um, he told us, just get your passport. Little did I know, getting that passport led to all kinds of things in my life. And it's pretty awesome, too. And so, anyway, get ready. Get your passport. If you don't have your passport, get it. I don't care if you're going ministering down the street. Get your passport. Yeah, get ready. And so, um, got a couple scriptures here. Okay, um, as a lot of y'all know this if you're in ministry, but Luke 9, 57 through 62, and it says, As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Don't we always say that? I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, permit me first to go bury my father. But he said to them, Allow the dead to bury the own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to those at home. But Jesus said to him, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Once God gives you that, put your hand on the plow and don't look back. Don't look back. Just 
these are good scriptures. I mean, I, I, we went over this three or four times this week, and each time I've read these, I've been very convicted on these scriptures. And so the next one is uh, Acts 20, 24. It says, but I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself so that I may finish my course in the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the grace or the gospel of the grace of God. In John 21, 17, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. And you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. We need to feed his sheep. Oh, there's Bo and Desiree. Um, this last time we were there for, I think, seven months straight. And we had many people come on a mission trip to Mombasa, Kenya. And uh, Bo and Desiree and their whole family, see them up there on the top. I don't think you had enough luggage there, but um, you ought to see us go back and forth. It's really kind of crazy. But uh, anyway, we had uh, several different groups come, and, but we wanted to thank Bo and Desiree for coming personally because they have, uh, they have been our mouthpiece here in the church and in America and doing so much for us. And I know a lot of y'all have too, and if I'm missing you, I'm sorry. Thank you. But uh, Bo and Desiree, they, they have done so much, and we just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you've done for us. And so we have uh, a couple ways. I really can't read that. Let me see. A couple ways to get involved. Oh, okay. Uh, ways you can get involved with us. Um, you can go to our website, and the last uh, screen is going to have our website on there. And you can sign up to receive our newsletter. And if I have your newsletter, or if I have your email and I'm sending you stuff already, uh, hopefully you're okay with that. Um, but you don't have to sign up if I already am doing that. And then um, you can pray. Please pray. We do not want to do anything without the full armor. We do not want to do anything unless God is before us. And he is the one prompting us to do it. Uh, you can also come on a mission trip. I would be very, very happy if you came on a mission trip. And it would be, it would be the time of your life in Jesus. Mm -hmm. say. Yeah, if you want to know more about a mission trip, you can ask Bo and Desiree. They'll, they'll, they'll tell you. Tell good things only. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we would love to, to make contact with you. You can go on our website there and uh, sign up for the newsletter, send us an email, talk to us somehow. Also, um, I think we're gonna set up a table. Are we gonna have set up a table? I think we're gonna set up a table real quick and I'll have some necklaces. I don't know if y'all, probably everybody has five necklaces already, but I'm gonna sell them anyway. And then we also have some earrings and some other things, so. And the earrings, um, she's kinda pushy a little bit. Um, the, <laughs> It says on my first paper here, I'm going to go back a little bit. It says it's better to be kind than funny. So she told me that before we started this today. So um, I'm going to try and do that. But the uh, earrings that we are selling um, are a match to the necklaces that we have sold in the past. And the earrings, uh, Irene is making the earrings, the one that was uh, run by the train. And so she is making the earrings, so any proceeds from the earrings will go directly to her. And so I would uh, like to pray for us, and then I think the, the people are going to come up here and uh, do the music, which is beautiful, by the way. And I think my brother's going to come up here and do the offering and things like that. So, But I would like to pray for us, and uh, if you need anything at all, just let us know, and we would love to pray with you also. Um, dear Heavenly Father, just uh, thank you, Jesus. All I can say is thank you, Jesus. You are the best thing 
best ever that we could ever want and have, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins and making a way for us when we did not deserve it. Thank you for your grace and your love, your compassion that you have on us, Jesus. And God, I just, you know, there, I have the scripture on the top of my tongue where it says, love you with all of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our minds, soul, everything, Lord. I just pray that you would help us to do that. And God, the next one says, love your neighbor as yourself. God, we want that love. We want that love that you give others and give to us, God. We want to be able to, to have that same kind of love. Jesus, I pray for that. God, I pray for everybody that's here. I pray for Rod and, and whoever's gone today and Maureen. I pray, Lord, for their, their, their travel mercies, Lord, that you protect them and bring them back safely. God, I thank you for this church. Thank you so much, Jesus. You have given us a church home like Calvary of the Coastlands. Thank you so much, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.